After a year in the Sudan, I was drafted back to Cairo. And because I'd been three years in deserts, I applied for a more humane posting. And eventually, I was sent to what was then Palestine. So I was posted to a little place called Kiryat Motskin on the shore of the Mediterranean, a little north of Haifa. I had heard about this Danish missionary that had a small children's home a little north of Jerusalem in a place called Ramallah, which was then a small Arab village. Everybody I'd met in the Sudan and in Egypt had said, if you really want a blessing, you need to go to that little children's home. So I got on a number 18 bus from Jerusalem, went out to the children's home, and arrived and found Lydia uh, with uh, eight small girls all around her. And uh, I was immediately impressed by the sense of peace, which was a very rare thing in the Middle East at that time. We had a strict upbringing, but she was loving. And uh, we were brought up with prayer and faith. Even I remember as very, very young, at one time we had no food, and mommy said, come on, girls. So we all had to kneel down and pray and ask God to send food. I, I remember it in exactly now. I can see it. In the morning, we opened the door, and there was a basket of eggs outside our door and some milk but we never knew who brought it. So we, that's how we brought up, to believe in that God would supply all he needs, and he did, and he's still doing it, even now. Mm. Our mother had a, quite a ministry amongst soldiers, because um, there was an, a missionary, she was a um, Salvation Army missionary in Egypt, and whenever they had um, leave, the soldiers that were in Egypt, she would say to them, you've got to go and see Miss Christensen. She has a lovely home with children, and, and she would be able to minister to you. And quite a lot of them came. And Derek was one of them. And uh, she made me very welcome, and we prayed together, and she gave me tea, and so on. So when I got back to Kiryat Motskin, I thought, that poor Danish lady, she's got all those children, and nobody but an Arab maid to help her and very little money. So I said, I'll pray for her. And I was praying, and the Lord spoke to me as he did quite frequently at that time. I would get an utterance in an unknown tongue, and then I would get the interpretation. And this time, the message I got was, I have joined you together under the same yoke and in the same harness. And I thought, that's remarkable. Does that mean we're going to work together? So then I applied for a posting, because I didn't get on well with my commanding officer. And he was glad to get rid of me and recommended the posting. So I ended up, a little while later, in number 16 British General Hospital on the Mount of Olives. And there is where I ended my military career. Being now within easy reach of Ramallah, I began to take fairly regular trips out to the children's home. And one day I spoke to Lydia and I said, on the basis of what the Lord had said to me, I said, I believe God would have us to work together. And her reply was characteristic. She said, well, he'll have to work on both ends of the chain. However, I really became more and more attached to the children's home and to Lydia. And it was like, as you could say, an oasis in the middle of a dreary military career. At that time, Lydia had relatively little fellowship with other Europeans or other non-Palestinians. So I, my visits were very welcome. And uh, we used to read the Bible and pray together. And uh, eventually, I, decided, I felt that God wanted me to be part of that children's home, which is the most improbable destination for a person with my background. So I can't exactly remember, to say the truth, how the relationship developed. But one day I said to Lydia, would you marry me? And very, without much emotion, she said yes. <laughs> so that is how we decided to get married. And most of the emotion came later. 
I remember Derek coming because we had a lot of soldiers coming to our home. Our home was open to the British soldiers, anybody who used to come in for prayer. And uh, I remember Derek coming and he came again and he came again. And then one day mommy said to us, and I knew there was something going on. I mean, I'd be about 16 then. I thought there's something going on here. We often thought it was kind of coming a lot to see my older sister because she was a beautiful girl, very oh. beautiful. And um, it, the, the shock of our lives is when we realized he was really coming to see mother. <laughs> and one day, mommy said to us, come on girls, I'm going to tell you something. I said, what? Well, she said, this is young man. And I said, yes, Derek, you know Derek. And he's asked me to marry him. And I said, mommy, you can't. I said, we've been girls here all, our, all the time. I said, you can't have a man in this house. We've never had one before. So what do we want a man for now? You're managing good, we're doing all right. She said, just think about it. I'm getting older and you girls one day will get, go and get married, have your own homes. And we all said, mommy, we'll look after you. You know that, we will always look after you. That's not the point. She said, I need a bit of happiness. So we said, okay, we agreed. We like Derek, he's a lovely fellow. He is really a nice man. I didn't care for him myself, if you want my real honest. Um, after all, he came and he took mother away from us, from me. I'm talking about myself now. I was very, very close to mother. So when Derek came, it sort of kind of pushed me to one side a little bit. <laughs> and uh, when you're 13, um, it's not a very nice feeling. It was very hard for him. You think about it. I mean, all women, no men in the house, eight girls and our mother. So I think he took on a very big, heavy job to have all those girls to look after them and be our father. I don't think it was easy for him neither. It must have, so we all adjusted very well. He was there for us if we needed him. We could go to him. And he was always obliging and helping us, whatever we asked. He opened up an awful lot more to us, and especially in, in my reading. It was wonderful. I just soaked it up. As you know, he's terrific on memorizing Bible verses, and we memorized something nearly every day. So we learned. We learned so much more. He opened up a completely different chapter in our lives. I'm glad he came to our home. I really am. It's lovely. So he made a difference, really. So we had a mom and a dad then. Not just mommy. We had a daddy too. So it was good. But on the wedding day, I remember I just sat in the church crying. I thought, my gosh, what's going to happen now? And I even told mommy, you know what's going to happen. I mean, at one time, we were all girls. You could just run out of, to the bathroom or whatever. You didn't have to worry about anybody being there. Now we had to dress decent and walk out of our rooms. We couldn't just walk out. And she said, that's right. But she said, I need happiness too, Tikva. You know that. I said, yes. So I'm really glad she had Derek in her life. The fact that I asked Lydia to marry me and she said yes was really rather remarkable because she was born the same year as my mother. And yet we never had any problem about that, the difference in our ages. When I communicated the news that I was planning to marry Lydia, my parents were disciplined English people, so they didn't uh, display a lot of emotion. And, uh, I mean, I was their only son, so their, all the eggs were in one basket. And uh, my father did write back and ask how old Lydia was. And I wrote back to him and said, it isn't customary to ask a woman's age. And he wrote back and apologized for that. They were really, I have to say, wonderful in their response in many ways. Well, then I had to get out of the army in Palestine, which was not normal. Uh, but by that time, I'd been appointed the chief clerk of the hospital, which was a job for a sergeant, and I was only a corporal. So I protested to the commanding officer, and he said, you are the chief clerk, so what could I say? But it worked out very well, because when I had to deal with all the official documents to get my release, I was in charge of all my own papers. So, and uh, after a certain amount of time, uh, I was, I, was in, I was permitted to obtain my discharge from the army in Palestine. 
Well, about the time I was discharged, just a bit before I actually came out of the army on the 16th of February, 1946, we got married with a religious ceremony. Uh, and it was one of those unusual days in Palestine when it snowed. So I heard later that when Lydia woke up and found it snowing, she told the children, it's too cold to get married today. Uh, but they said, Mama, you've said you're going to get married, you'll have to do it. So we met and we got married by a, a, um, a Jewish believer in a very simple ceremony without any fanfare or any, anything really to make it distinct. So I came out of the army and then a little later on the 17th of March, uh, we had a civil marriage ceremony in the uh, office of the district commissioner in Jerusalem. So I was religiously married and then legally married. And in fact, I was married. That's the truth of the matter. At the time we got married, the, the whole, the personnel of the home consisted of Lydia, eight girls, and the Arab maid, Jamila. The, of the girls, six were Jewish. One was a, an Arab from a Muslim background, and the youngest was English. Our life in the, in the home was very simple. We lived in Arab style, and not a wealthy Arab style. Our main items of diet were very coarse bread, olive oil, which we dipped, in which we dipped the bread, and then sprinkled it with a thing called zata, which was powdered hyssop. And uh, we had milk, we had some eggs, and uh, plenty of bread and olive oil until it ran off the children's elbows as they dipped. And all that was amazingly cheap. You could fill a, a big earthen jar of olive oil for a few shillings, and a sack of Jaffa oranges cost two shillings at that time. And really, it was a very healthy diet, in many ways much healthier than what we came to later in life when we were more, quote, civilized. The home was permeated with a spirit of prayer, because Lydia was a praying person. She was very busy. She'd be changing diapers or filling bottles or cooking, but she'd be praying all the time. And really, the children grow up. For them, prayer was something absolutely natural as natural as breathing. And when soldiers came to the home, which they frequently did, Lydia would get the children down on their knees praying while she ministered to the soldiers. And I think many British and American soldiers never forgot the impact. Much later on, I worked with John and Elizabeth Sherrill on a book about Lydia. And they were very interested to know what kind of relationship we really had. But they concluded it was a real love relationship. We really came to love one another with a very warm and lasting love. And uh, she was such an unusual person. You can't judge her by normal standards, really. And in a way, she never got old. I mean, she got old physically, but she was always full of vitality and never stodgy, never old-fashioned, although in many ways she was very old-fashioned, but I mean, it was, she was so full of life that it made, uh, uh, it made it easy. I mean, you know, God does extraordinary things if you're prepared to let him do them. I think one th advantage I had was I was pretty prepared to let God do some extraordinary things, which otherwise he wouldn't have done. Obviously, he wouldn't have forced it on me. And I, I understood that, the, only I understood this after we were married. <clears throat> it said the yoke, same yoke and the same harness. The yoke was marriage, the harness was serving the Lord together. And after all, for 30 years, we served the Lord together. And, uh, you know, 30 years of married life and service is not a little. And also, I'd have to say that I was the instrument of God to save the lives of the family, because probably without me, 
they would have been just massacred by the Arabs. And I'm not holding the Arabs accountable for that. That's just the way the situation was. They were enemies. 